Hello there from Canada. This is Mr. Evans walking around Niagara Falls State Park in Canada over fall break. It is Monday, October 17th. And right beneath me, you can see the Niagara River. We are south of the falls right now. So right down there, you can see the Niagara River. And actually, the other side of the embankment there, you see, the other side of the river is actually the U.S. So we are on the very edge of Canada right now. And if we were to go in the opposite direction, you can actually see off in the distance, if I can get through the trees, you can actually see the bridge from the U.S. to Canada with the U.S. there being the embankment on the left that would cross you over into Niagara Falls over this direction. So as I said, we are on the Canadian side right now. At some future point, I will most likely be taking a video of the falls so that you can see the U.S. side and the Canadian side. And see the difference between Canadian Falls, the Horseshoe Falls, and the American Falls, the Bridal Veil Falls, I believe they are called. Ooh, we are coming up on a very nice picturesque view of the Niagara River. So there is a wonderful view of the Niagara River and what you are able to see of it. This left side here and the left side of all the land that you see going down there is Canada. Right side would be New York. Off that direction, back towards the bridge that we looked at, you would get Buffalo about 20 miles down that way. And it's hard to see in the video, but you can kind of see how quickly that river is running. That even from standing up here, probably four or five hundred feet above the river, you can still easily see the movement of all those currents in the river. It is a very swift river. So we will continue on the trail into the woods. Walking through the trail, we are at a place called Fort Erie. In the War of 1812, Canada was still part of Great Britain. And as such, there were many battles fought between the U.S. and the Canadians. And this is the site of one of them. <laughs> called the Battle of Queenston Heights. And later on, we will look at some of the monuments that you will find at that battle, at the fort. So they named the town Fort Erie as well, but there's also an actual Fort Erie. So, going through here, just a trail walking along the river, trail going through the woods. It is not the warmest at the moment, 
I believe it is about 50 degrees. It's not horribly cold, but not exactly super warm either. Looks like we're coming up on a little bit of a clearing. Ooh. And there you can see quite a bit more of the river. And exactly how far above the river we are. There's more of the river. There you can much more easily see the speed of those currents. Continuing on down the trail, this is probably going to be a mostly exploratory video. As I have not walked this trail before, I do not know exactly where it goes, and hmm, we found some stairs. Let's see where this goes. We have a little bit of a higher trail and it looks like we have actually discovered part of the fort as well. Looks like they have stationed a cannon here. With some information on uh, the battles that happened here. So you could kind of see how, especially if people were sailing in from the Niagara River, how this would be a very good place to have uh, fortifications. Very nice place to defend yourself from the high ground. Obi-Wan Kenobi would be very proud. And it looks like you can go up that way. We are not going to. I don't know where it will go. So we're just gonna choose a random path to go down. Nice little nature walk that we are having. Nice little place that we can explore. Looks like we're coming up on some other plaque, although it looks like the information may have been removed for that plaque. Hmm. We'll turn right, we'll go back, see if we can continue following the river. Interesting 
opening of trees here. Oh, looks like we are about to go down. And uh, cannot go down anymore. So we shall turn back as uh, I will not be able to continue. Let's see what it looks like though. Obviously we are not going down, but let's just see why they do not. Hmm. They must not trust it. It also is about to take us into the residential neighborhood over there, so hmm. not much more to see. So we will go back the way we came and see if we can continue on our trail. So we can continue upward or we can continue right at the plaque. Let's go ahead and see what's right. Looks like we are coming into some sort of clearing over here. Nice little bush. And some stairs which look to be at an angle. Not sure that I trust these but Whatever. They have not closed them, so they must be trustworthy enough. Oh, and I'm about to cross a road. Even more fun. It looks like we have a little bit more down here to the fort. I don't know what this is, but we will find out. So it looks like we have a printery, a place that they would print things with a printing press out here. And Apparently here's the grave site. Nope, it looks like just announcing this is uh, where this person lived. Not a grave itself. With a printing press that we have here. So apparently this was formerly his house this William McKinsey. And this is where he printed a lot of his materials. And then we just get into more residential stuff. with some information on that thing that he was printing, the Colonial Advocate.
and there's your sign for it. So let's go back up. And let's see what we can find in the other direction. So we are most likely headed back up to the fort because the only direction we can go is upwards. Ooh, little black squirrel. I certainly do want you to do a lot of climbing here. Well, we have made our way back to the fort. So, in our second video, we will explore a bit of the fort. 